Hey, what's up everybody? Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today I want to share a little uh, perspective technique with you, lesson on calculating space. And basically, we're going to do a grid floor pattern. Uh, but keep in mind, this applies to a lot of other things. This can help you space windows on the side of a building and place all sorts of uh, shapes within your architectural sketching and rendering. So uh, basically what we're going to do, I've already established uh, this outer edge is your picture plane. Okay, so you're framing basically. Uh, you ever notice when like a director holds their fingers up like L's, like they're trying to frame a shot? That's basically what this kind of represents. So just picture somebody holding their hands up like that. And then this is actually a back wall. Okay, so it's like a room inside of this imaginary picture plane. And here's our good old vanishing point, VP. So our horizon line is actually back there somewhere. I just want you to be aware of that. So when it starts to look like we're creating a horizon line like this, that's not a horizon line, that is a, um, you know, interior of a room basically. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is, let's get rid of that, you don't need that VP there, just remember that's a vanishing point. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw out and find the edge of our room. Actually, we're gonna go to this edge because again, that's our back wall. So we're gonna go out like this, okay? But the thing is, we need a, um, and even spacing across to figure out what our, you know, our grid pattern is going to look like. We can do that up here, or we could do that back here. So you just have to figure out, you know, based upon um, your constraints, maybe you want to start back here. So let's do that. So I'm going to add a new layer, and I'm just going to do a quick, um, this is just something I do to measure, and it's just basically create a line, and hold Alt, and shift and drag over I'll find the separation that I want we'll say about right there hit command E so you know remember if you're working traditionally this may mean another sheet of paper I used to use a sheet of paper and kind of slide it across or tape it down and, and do the same thing over top uh, but I'll show you here what what this means so alt shift again align the next two up over so you're basically just overlapping those lines and that will give you your equal spacing. Command E in this software to merge down. Alt Shift, drag across with the move tool. Command E and so on and so forth. And you see it starts off slow and then it gains some speed. Uh, and then also right here, I'm just gonna hold Alt and Shift again because I don't need that many of them to get to the edge here. And then I'll just hit Command E twice. And it should put them all in the same layer, yeah. So now I can do another little edit here. I can hit Command Shift T and I'm just going to stretch this out just a little bit so they're edge to edge. Not a big deal, but if not, you end up with a little bit of um, an angled or a shorter piece of uh, grid pattern. Not a big deal, but since we're here and we can fix it, why not? So we get rid of these guys. We don't need them anymore. And now we go back to drawing in our perspective lines. So let's go back to this layer, grab our trusty pencil and we're going to intersect through that top mark and just repeat this process. You see these grid patterns are going to get pretty large uh, towards the base of the uh, picture plane and that's fine. You know, it's if you don't like the way it's working out as far as the uh, scale of these, then you're just going to go back and edit your initial uh, separation that we created with those little lines. I feel like that one should be over a little bit more. And you see, I'm not worrying about this being perfect, but it's still gonna come out looking uh, pretty good. That's the beauty of this uh, exercise, or technique, I should say. It works really well. You see, I gotta really stretch that line over here. I gotta move my screen over. And get that last line in, just like that. Okay, so now, probably wondering like okay well how do we get a perfect grid pattern going it's actually pretty simple we just take a straight line we figure out the squared area so now keep in mind if you're going to square this off you have to go to the base of where it you know goes past our picture plane so what we're going to do is draw over you have to hold shift in this software with the straight line tool uh, but if you're working traditionally just hold on to your ruler okay so there's that and we got our, our straight line and what we do now is pretty ingenious, actually. It's pretty neat. It's as simple as 
crisscrossing our corners. Doesn't get much easier than this, folks. So go from corner to corner of the entire floor plane, basically. And I'm going to do that in a red line because we're not going to use that just for a guide. And I just want you to be able to see a little bit better what we're going to do now. So go back to a straight line tool, back to black. And we just basically find each area where it intersects. Uh, I actually draw over and hover over this area and hit Command Z and then hold Shift again and go back. So this is just the way I do it, but it works out better for the way that I'm using this software. So holding Shift to get that straight line, hover over the area, Command Z, draw back through. I just have to pay attention, make sure I hit my diagonal line there, not a big deal. And so the neat thing about this is that these are spaced evenly. They're, um, you know, minus any inaccuracies I might have by slightly uh, missing the mark, I guess. But other than that, they're pretty darn close. Now, you might be a digital artist all the way, and you might say, well, why would I do this? Because I can just do this so much faster with, uh, you know, creating a grid pattern uh, vertically to the screen or to my you know, view, I guess, and then distorting it into place and, and you'd be right that is a much faster way to do this uh, but this way works on paper this way works if the lights go out um, so it's just it, it's important to know and it's one of those things where it seems like you know well how many times am I really going to create a uh, a tiled floor oh wrong one I was trying to get rid of those little marks uh, but it's not just for tile floors. This works so well for so many things. Like I said, if you need to space out some windows and you want them evenly spaced, then I should, probably should be going to the other side. Then you're gonna use this. So just like that. And, I, and to make this read better, I probably should be thinning up the line that I'm applying as I go back into space. Uh, because naturally, as things read into space, um, or I'm sorry, as, as things go back, it recede into space is what I meant to say. Uh, they become less visible and, and in turn you can really bring this out by thickening up your lines up close like, you know, like we do for most of our comic work. So I just wanted to show you this. this is a really useful technique. You can get rid of your diagonal line now. You can uh, then take this work and you can merge it together. And then you, oh, actually I didn't want to merge those together. Hold on. Where is it? This one, I just want to merge my lines together real quick. Merge those together. And then we can take the selection tool. Actually, just use the rectangular selection tool to be quicker. Use the, uh, the lines, uh, the borders to safeguard us. And in a few short seconds here, you'll see that we have a grid pattern in perspective. So there you have it. So hopefully this uh, helps you out and gives you an idea for how you'd go about doing stuff like this. And again, from here, it makes it a lot easier to start placing details. So if you were to rotate this and kind of picture that this is a side of a building, well, there's your windows, folks. You can draw right over this, pick a different color. Seem to be going, leaning towards red today. Um, yeah, so you could place your windows and you could say, well, I'm going to have these windows that are, you know, two blocks over. I'm going to have a spacing of one block, two blocks over. And just like that, they're in my perspective. So, yeah, lots of neat things that you can do with this technique. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to comment in the section below. Let me know what else you'd like to see. I'll be bringing you more videos like this very soon. So as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.